workplaces don't exist in isolation, they reflect what's going on in wider society. Up to 70% of people from an ethnic minority background have faced some kind of racism in the workplace. And I saw a significant impact when I actually got ICs waste on ICE my name, I shortened it and I started to get interviews. The Equality and Human Rights Commission outlines that under the Equality Act of 2010, you must not be discriminated against because of your race. In the Equality Act, race can mean your colour or your nationality, including your citizenship. It can also mean your ethnic or national origins, which may not be the same as your current nationality. For example, you may have Chinese national origins and be living in Scotland with a British passport. Race also covers ethnic groups. This means a group of people who all share the same protected characteristic of ethnicity or race. A 2019 study by the University of Edinburgh found discrimination at work could include unfair assumptions about an employee's ability in relation to promotion and employers not wanting a particular racial profile to become the public face of an organisation. They found 25% of people who said they had experienced discrimination said it happened while applying for a job. 18% said it affected their chances at promotion. Another 18% said it had affected their attempts to seek equal pay. I remember when I would uh, somebody directed me to the job centre and in the, the job centre lady was asking me what's my plan? to find a job and I said I've got the qualification, I've got the experience, I'm going to do it. She said I don't think so and I'm looking at that lady and I'm thinking in my head she's crazy, we are in Scotland, we are in the UK so everybody can find something to do and six years later I have to say she was right saying that it won't work because I'm here overqualified, I'm in education again because I want to change my life and I just can't find a job. And actually when it came to the point where I was applying for roles, I found that using my full Sri Lankan name, which is massive, was debarring me from getting interviews. And each time I show my CV, maybe because I'm thinking maybe my CV is not working and things like that, and people are saying, are you overqualified? Oh, that's brilliant. And I'm thinking, okay, all this brilliant thing does not work because I can't find a job. And I came in Scotland all dreaming it is not working. I think there's maybe two other Latin like, ethnic minority women in my workplace out of a couple of hundred uh, and I often get you know confused with them even though they're about 20 years older than me and things like that and that's I mean I mean I'm laughing because that's kind of funny but that's just one of the um, everyday ways it sort of builds up. I saw a significant impact when I actually got ICES westernized my name I shortened it to Shan Saba and then it fitted in with my applications, I could fit in application forms and I started to get interviews and I'll never have any evidence to prove by shorting my name I got more interviews but it looked like that to me. Um, so to me straight away something that debarred me from getting interviews was the length of my name and an assumption that something about me that it wouldn't fit in. I think it's sadly far more prevalent than people might realise. Up to 70% of people from an ethnic minority background have faced some kind of racism in the workplace. Um, with a really high percentage of those individuals, up to 60%, um, saying that it's been blatant bullying. We know that certainly over the last many years, there has been you know, an increase in hostility um, towards certainly the Muslim community, and you see that through the mainstream um, media's reporting of certain stories and the, and the Islamophobia that's sort of tied into that. And there's also a shockingly high percentage of people who say that they've faced violence in the workplace. Um, as a result of, of, of racism. So for me that's a really concerning set, set of statistics. What's classed as banter, you know, it's uncomfortable to challenge sometimes that banter. I think we live in a much more politically correct environment, but people still harbour those prejudices and those racist views. Um, but they don't manifest themselves as openly as they maybe would have done in the past. There's some comments that people will often make and they'll present it as if it's just banter in the workplace and we know that of course it's not banter. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's racist undertones and all of that. And you see that through the, the direct sort of racism that people experience through 
verbal um, you know, the words that people use or you know something more extreme like physical assault you see it in the way in which people are are not promoted in certain posts there are so many other ethnic minorities they don't even have the opportunity to be employed and I think it's the biggest issue at at the moment many people come to me uh, Rosa I applied for this job and I'm very I am capable of doing this job but they've hired a white person instead of me and I feel like I have been discriminated we have to look at it in the whole the whole concept of it you know we can't just put it down to one one organization it has to be from the very top and that's not to say that black or ethnic minorities should get jobs because of their colour or their ethnicity. That's not. If they're the best qualified for that role, then they deserve every right to get an opportunity in that role. Looking at your recruitment process and how you, where you're seeking applications from, um, offering assistance to uh, underrepresented communities in terms of assistance with applications, with uh, interview processes, perhaps consider having a diverse uh, interview panel. The more people we have are diverse in workplaces, the less likely it would be for um, people to be discriminated. We try to kind of implement the Equality Acts in our workplace, um, not just talking about it, because there's so many organizations and sectors, they just say, oh, we're, they're talking about it, but they're actually not implementing in practice. And I think that's the problem. HR has to be the heart of it. It has to be understood, understood. And I think the only way they can understand that is through empathy. And the only way empathy exists is to hear more stories, hear people's struggles, what they're going through, all the different, and not only that, Struggles is not enough, you need to start thinking about what could the solutions be. Diversity in the workplace opens up people's minds. You have to work with people of different ethnicities and different backgrounds to understand their cultures and how culturally diverse our country is. If you work with the same type of people, if that makes sense, uh, all your life, you're never going to experience the white diverse culture, cultural diversity that we have in Scotland. Education is a huge part of um, dissecting, um, of challenging racism, um, wherever it exists. It's important to speak out if you experience or witness racism in the workplace. If you do, speak to someone. Contact your trade union or show racism the red card.